Identifier. An identifier is a name that identifies either a unique object or a unique class of objects, where the object or class may be an idea, physical, countable, object, or physical, non-countable, substance. The abbreviation ID often refers to identity, identification, or an identifier. An identifier may be a word, number, letter, symbol, or any combination of those. The words, numbers, letters, or symbols may follow an encoding system ideas or longer names, or they may simply be arbitrary. When an identifier follows an encoding system, it is often referred to as a code or ID code. For instance, the ISO IEC 11179 Metadata Registry Standard defines a code as a system of valid symbols that substitute for longer values in contrast to identifiers without symbolic meaning. Identifiers that do not follow any encoding scheme are often said to be arbitrary IDS, they are arbitrarily assigned and have no greater meaning. The unique identifier is an identifier that refers to only one instance only one particular object in the universe. A part number is an identifier, but it is not a unique identifier, for that, a serial number is needed, to identify each instance of the part design. Thus the identifier Model T identifies the class of automobiles that Ford's Model T comprises, whereas the unique identifier Model T serial number 159862 identifies one specific member of that class, that is, one particular Model T car, owned by one specific person. The concepts of name and identifier are denotatively equal, and the terms are thus denotatively synonymous, but they are not always connotatively synonymous, because code names and ID numbers are often connotatively distinguished from names in the sense of traditional natural language naming. For example, both Jamie Zywinski and Netscape employee number 20 are identifiers for the same specific human being. But normal English language connotation may consider Jamie Zywinski a name and not an identifier, whereas it considers Netscape employee number 20 an identifier but not a name. This is an emic indistinction rather than an edic one. In metadata, an identifier is a language independent label, sign or token that uniquely identifies an object within an identification scheme. The suffix identifier is also used as a representation term when naming a data element. ID codes may inherently carry metadata along with them. For example, when you know that the food package in front of you has the identifier 2110925T15 42ZMFR5P0224345, you not only have that data, you also have the metadata that tells you that it was packaged on September 25, 2011, at 342 p.m. UTC, manufactured by licensed vendor number 5, at the Peoria, Illinois, USA plant, in Building 2 and was the 243rd package off the line in that shift, and was inspected by inspector number 45. Arbitrary identifiers might lack metadata. For example, if a food package just says 100,054,678,214, its ID may not tell anything except identity, no date, manufacturer name, production sequence rank, or inspector number. In some cases, arbitrary identifiers such as sequential serial numbers leak information. Opaque identifiers, identifiers designed to avoid leaking even that small amount of information, include really opaque pointers and version 4 UUIDs. In computer science, identifiers are lexical tokens that name entities. Identifiers are used extensively in virtually all information processing systems. Identifying entities makes it possible to refer to them, which is essential for any kind of symbolic processing. In computer languages, identifiers are tokens which name language entities. Some of the kinds of entities an identifier might denote include variables, types, labels, subroutines, and packages. Which character sequences constitute identifiers depends on the lexical grammar of the language. A common rule is alphanumeric sequences, with underscore also allowed, and with the condition that it not begin with a digit, so code say underscore 1 are allowed, but code say underscore 2 is not. This is the definition used in earlier versions of C and C++, Python, and many other languages. Later versions of these languages, along with many other modern languages, Support almost all Unicode characters in an identifier. However, a common restriction is not to permit white space characters in language operators. This simplifies tokenization by making it preform and context free. For example, forbidding code say underscore 3 in identifiers due to its use as a binary operation means that code say underscore 4 and code say underscore 5 can be tokenized the same, while if it were allowed, 
Cody say underscore four would be an identifier, not an addition. White space an identifier is particularly problematic, as if spaces are allowed in identifiers, then a clause such as Cody say underscore seven is legal, with Cody say underscore eight as an identifier, but tokenizing this requires the phrasal context of being in the condition of an if clause. Some languages do allow spaces in identifiers, however, such as Algol 68 and some Algol variants, for example, the following is a valid statement, Cody say underscore 9 which could be entered as Cody say underscore 10. In Algol this was possible because keywords are syntactically differentiated, so there is no risk of collision or ambiguity, spaces are eliminated during the line reconstruction phase, and the source was processed via scannerless parsing, so lexing could be context sensitive. In most languages, some character sequences have the lexical form of an identifier but are known as keywords. For example, Cody say underscore 11 is frequently a keyword for an if clause, but lexically is of the same form as Cody say underscore 12 or Cody say underscore 13 namely a sequence of letters. This overlap can be handled in various ways. Thesi may be forbidden from being identifiers, which simplifies tokenization and parsing, in which case they are reserved words, they may both be allowed but distinguished in other ways, such as via dropping, or keyword sequences may be allowed as identifiers in which sense is determined from context, which requires a context-sensitive lexer. Non-keywords may also be reserved words, particularly for forward compatibility, in case a word may become a keyword in future. In a few languages, for example, PL slash 1, the distinction is not clear. The scope, or accessibility within a program of an identifier can be either local or global. A global identifier is declared outside of functions and is available throughout the program. A local identifier is declared within a specific function and only available within that function. For implementations of programming languages that are using a compiler, identifiers are often only compile time entities. That is, at runtime the compiled program contains references to memory addresses and offsets rather than the textual identifier tokens. In languages that support reflection, such as interactive evaluation of source code, identifiers are also runtime entities, sometimes even as first class objects that can be freely manipulated and evaluated. In Lisp, these are called symbols. Compilers and interpreters do not usually assign any semantic meaning to an identifier based on the actual character sequence used. However, there are exceptions. For example, in some languages such as Go, identifiers' uniqueness is based on their spelling and their visibility. In HTML, an identifier is one of the possible attributes of an HTML element. It is unique within the document. Many resources may carry multiple identifiers. Typical examples are the inverse is also possible, where multiple resources are represented with the same identifier. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.